Hello everyone. My name is George Zidan and I'm from Palestine. Usually when I say this, people will ask me, what's your real name? We'll get it straight. This is my real name. It's George. <laughs> I've graduated with a business degree from Chowan University in a very small town in North Carolina. My presence over there always felt very contentious. Not only that the, the town is in the middle of nowhere and McDonald's closes at 7, <laughs> but the most well-known student of the school is Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Any guesses on his CV? <laughs> He's the planner of September 11. I've had to prove my innocence many times. I've had to defend myself many times in the school. As, as much as I tried to integrate within the school and the society of the town, it was very hard. At this stage, I had two options. Either I stay in my room, keep studying, do not expose myself to vulnerable situations, or go out and try to make a difference. I've decided to start organizing speaking tours about Palestine. I began with the churches. Believe it or not, in this small town of 5,000 people, there are 16 different churches. I began going to these churches, churches, telling them about Palestine, not only about our struggle, but our traditions, our cuisines, our demographics. Just get them to be familiar with Palestine. Throughout the time, I started to feel difference among students in, the, in this university and people in the town, started accepting me more. I was even able to raise $12,000 for an orphanage in a small town, my local hometown, Bejala, by selling handmade olive wood articles for people in the city. After graduation, I came back to Palestine with hunger inside of me that I really want to continue on this path. path. I saw that there's a lot of work that needs to be done within the West and the US. People have so much misinformation about us and people have, have much strong stereotypes against Palestine and our cause. I joined two Danish girls, two Danish colleagues in beginning the Right to Movement Palestine campaign. We started by organizing a marathon in Palestine and establishing local running communities behind it. We had three objectives. First, we wanted to give a positive message of, of, about Palestine. For the last 70 years, everything has been coming from Palestine is war, hatred, conflict, and sad stories. We wanted to bring positivity, focus on the good stuff. We Palestinians like to sing, run, dance, like any other nation in the world. Also, we wanted to use sports as a method to raise awareness about restrictions imposed on our day, everyday movement by the Israeli illegal occupation, as well as restrictions imposed on Palestinian women movement in our conservative societies. And finally, we wanted to build a financially sustainable grassroots movement that's led by Palestinian volunteers and that's not dependent on donor aid or, and the granting system. We started by organizing the first Palestine Marathon in 2013. We had 600 runners, 300 internationals, and 37% female participation. We did the event in 2014 with 2,000 runners, 2015 with 3,000 runners, and the last edition in 2016, we had 4,571 runners, 1,200 internationals, over 98 countries were represented, and 46% female participation. The race was a great success. The race itself resembles the reality of our everyday life. It's not something we create for good photography. It starts, by, uh, from, it starts and ends at the Nativity Church, a holy site, and you know how many of those, those we have. You run by an illegal checkpoint, by the apartheid wall, through refugee camps, by Israeli illegal settlements, and land that's threatened to be confiscated for settlements on a daily basis. This is the truth of our everyday life. This is how I go to work, how I go to study, how I, this is how I run. This is our life. In Bethlehem, where I'm from, we don't have 42 kilometers or 26 miles, the distance you need continuously to finish a marathon. The maximum distance we have is a 10 kilometer route by taking every corner of the town. In order for you to finish a marathon, you have to do this distance four times. And this is where the name and the aspect of right to movement came in. In line with the marathon, we, we, we began by focusing on the communities. We started establishing running communities that promote the running culture. 
and encourage Palestinian men and women to run together in equal numbers. Start accepting that Palestinian women are out there in the street running and doing what, what they want to do. In Palestine, we have nine communities from Gaza to the north, West Bank and Jerusalem, covering all the aspects of the, our Palestinian categories. One of the most inspiring stories is for Inas, a 16-year-old from Gaza, that a Palestinian female runner, that has been, in order for her to pursue her dreams and ensure her safety, she's been running in Gaza, in the, in the town called Khan Yunus, while her parents and her family are driving next to her, cheering her on, eating snacks along the way, so they feel okay about her running in Gaza the long distances. We did not only wait for people to come Palestine, to Palestine to learn about our struggle and our life as Palestinians and Palestinian runners and Palestinian females. We took this message internationally. We started organizing international aware advocacy tours where we participate in, we send genderly equal groups to participate in international marathons to raise, to, and organize information sessions to raise awareness about the life of the Palestinians and the struggle of, the Pal of Palestine. We participated in marathons in Copenhagen, San Francisco, Chicago, Switzerland, Derry, Beirut, Cape Town, and many other places. The movement is a voluntary movement. All of the members and people behind it are volunteers. And we, we are able to, or, to do actual uh, activities by raising funds through creative sources, through crowdfunding, through organizing events like dinners, parties, hikes, sports events, selling t-shirts. Recently, we have, in the last year, we've taken this to a different level. We started looking for new avenues for our project. One of the, for our campaign, one of our most exciting campaigns was in Silicon Valley, where we took a strong argument with tech giant companies like Google and Apple and urged them to include Palestine and Palestinian villages in their electronic mapping. They have said earlier they don't have Palestine in, the, in their map because the US and 42 countries do not recognize Palestine as a state. Using their logic, we argued back, why do you have every single Israeli settlement that is illegal by every international standard and is not recognized by any country in the world, fully navigated in your maps with every corner store, every bakery, every bakery and every place in this settlement is navigated in the maps? We were able, the good news is that after six months, after over a year of work, and after six months of this event, Google has responded positively. They've added many, many more villages on their map. And, the, and they sent their uh, Google teams and their Google car and the 360 navigation to navigate the Palestinian routes. Another exciting project we did was in the last Christmas Eve of 2016 where 22 of us, 11 Marys and 11 Josephs, ran together on Christmas Eve from Nazareth to Bethlehem, wearing historical outfits, trying to use the biblical story, not for religious purposes, but to use it to raise, to raise awareness among people of how would the trip be like for Mary and Joseph after 2016 years. <laughs> full of Israeli checkpoints, full of refugee camps, full of settlements and a big wall, do you think that Mary and Joseph will be able to make it after 2016 years? How would the world be now if they were, if they were to do it now? How would, the, how would the world be? I'd like to say that we've, we're running to tell a different story. It's very easy for you to understand what I'm saying. All it takes is a running shoes. We will keep doing this. We'll keep running until we have our freedom and we're able to run and finish a full marathon, starting from the Nativity Church in Bethlehem and finishing in Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. Thank you very much.